Hello people, I'm making a new video because I'm a big fan of Numberphile, the YouTube channel, and last week they were talking about something called the Collapse Conjecture, and I found it super interesting, and I made some experiments, and I found some little patterns, but I also made a lot of visualizations and graphs, and I thought I would share all these visuals uh, with you and some of the surprising things in them. And you should go to number file and check what the collapse conjecture is about. But to recap, uh, if you take any number and you apply a set of rules to it, then there are some behaviors that happen. And if the number is even, then you divide it by two. Otherwise, you multiply it by three and you add one. And that gives you an another number. And then you apply the same rules to this number and you get a sequence of numbers. And there is a nice way to visualize this. Uh, by drawing the real line and drawing dots and connecting them by lines. For example, if you start with the point 2 and you apply the rules, then you get the number 1 and then 4 and then 2 and then 1 and then 4 and so on. So here you see the cycle. But if you start with the number 3, then you get 3, 10, 5, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1 and 4 and 2 and 1 and 4 and 2 and 1 again. Other numbers have more complex dynamics. For example, number 9, which is somewhere here, will also bounce to the right and to the left. Uh, well, it does some big jumps as well, but eventually it does land in the 4 to 1 cycle. So this is number 4, this is 2, this is 1, this is 4, this is 2, this is 1, and so on and so on. So the conjecture uh, is that any number you start with will eventually fall into this 4 to 1, 4 to 1 cycle. Uh, one way to try to tackle this problem is to see what happens when you apply these rules to real numbers, uh, but in that case the definition of odd and even is not possible, so you have to do something about that. So the first step is to express the same formulas that we had before but without any branching. So f of n, if you write it as 1 divided by 4 times 7n plus 2 minus k times 5n plus 2, this is still expressing the same behavior we had before. If k takes the value plus 1 when n is even, and if k takes the value negative 1 when n is odd. So what we can do is to replace k by something that accepts and not only even and odd numbers, but real numbers as well. And we can use a cosine wave, which it indeed goes through 1 and negative 1 continuously. So we can kind of map it properly by using cosine of pi n, and that will still give us plus 1 and negative 1 as we input even and odd numbers to it. So f of x equals 1 quarter of 7x plus 2 minus cosine of pi x times 5x plus 2. And now we can see what happens when you use these formulas with non-natural uh, numbers. For example, if we use 1.5, then we see that 1.5 moves to the right, and then more to the right, and then to the left, so it behaves a bit like 9, but every now and then it's really performing these huge jumps, and eventually it really explodes to infinity very quickly. It does diverge, and every real number I have tried diverges to infinity. So the next obvious thing to do is to expand the conjecture not only to real numbers, but to complex numbers as well. And I have seen this done on the internet, and I think they did it maybe not uh, the best way perhaps, I will explain later why, but uh, I'm still going to spend a little bit of time in that approach they took. So that's simply to take the formula we had and replace x by z, where z now presents a complex number, and instead of visualizing the dynamics of each point with lines and arcs, I'm going to just visualize the end result of the dynamics, like either the point is divergent, or it converges to a point or to a cycle, or maybe it's chaotic, but it doesn't go to infinity. So if a point in the plane under this formula doesn't explode to infinity, it becomes white, otherwise it stays gray. And you can see that it's one of these pockets of non-divergent points have uh, little islands of such points around it, and then there are even more islands inside, so it really looks like it's a fractal here. And of course, you cannot resist the temptation to use fancy colors to study the orbits of all these points when you are talking of uh, fractals. So this is the point A, this was 7, this is the point C equals 6, and 5, and 3, and 2, uh, and 1, and 0. This is the origin here, this big black blob. 
And of course, it's a fractal, right? So if you zoom in into the graph, you get more and more structure and patterns showing up, which is really fun to watch, but um, also distracting, I must say. So let's move on and try to use complex numbers in a different way. I really think that using the cosine isn't the best way to generalize this. And once you use complex numbers, I would embrace the whole complexity of the problem and use exponentials instead. And I think this is better because the exponential doesn't have an opinion on whether the real part or the imaginary part of things are more important. The cosine wave is kind of opinionated. It's I'm the real part of an exponential. The exponential doesn't have an opinion on its own. So instead of uh, making k equals the cosine of pi c, if we make k of c equals the exponential of j pi c, we can get still the same behavior where if we input odd natural numbers, we still get a negative one. And if we input even numbers to the exponential, we still get plus one. But now we are in a better place to see what happens uh, graphically when we use these complex numbers in the collapse conjecture. So this is what you get. You get, again, a fractal. Don't get uh, misled by the black areas in the graph. These are not converging points. This is still mostly divergent points. Actually, most of the plane does diverge under the formula that we are using, except for a few points. Like We know the natural numbers don't diverge. There is also many other points which don't diverge, which are not natural numbers. There is the uh, point zero, but there are many other fixed points, for example, which when applied on the formula, you get the same point again. And there are infinitely many of them uh, I found a little formula that expresses where they lay in the plane. Um, it's easy to derive this formula. You can try to do it as an exercise. Uh, let's try to zoom in into the 0, 0, or c equals 0 fixed point to enjoy a little bit of the fractal structure. And you can see there are all these spirals showing up, which is uh, really nice. Now. Uh, let's zoom in in one of the numbers that we do know don't diverge, like the c equals 3. 3 is a natural number, and we saw before that 3 uh, becomes 10, and 10 becomes 5, and 5 becomes 16, and so on, eventually falling into the 4 to 1 cycle. So let's see what happens in this fractal when we zoom in into the c equals 3 point. So this is a zoom in this c equals 3 point, and as you can see, um, the whole structure of the fractals appears over and over again. There is always this kind of finger uh, which branches in smaller fingers and so on and so on. But I'm going to go back and zoom in again into the same point. But before doing that, I'm going to mark some points in the plane in yellow. And I should explain this properly, but I'm going to make it short. Basically, these points are the pre-images of zero, which means that these yellow points, when I apply uh, the collapse conjecture formulas to them, they all land into the fixed point c equals zero. And I'm not going to explain why I'm doing this, but uh, I would say that these yellow points serve as anchoring points or reference points that will help us locate ourselves geographically in the different copies of the fractal. So let me explain what this means. In this case, we are all the way zoomed out again. And this point here is zero. And this is z equals three. This is the point we are going to zoom in to. And as you can see, if I count how many edges we have in these fingers between the c equals 0 point and the c equals 3 point, we have exactly three edges. Now let's zoom in until we see the next copy of the whole fractal. All right, let's stop here. Now let's see how many border or edges are between the anchoring point or the pre-image of 0 and the c equals 3 point that we are zooming into. So we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 10 steps to go from the anchoring point to the c equals 3 point. If we keep zooming in, and I'm going to speed it up a little bit, now we stop here and we get, uh, we count again the amount of edges between the anchoring point, which is the second pre image of 0, and c equals 3. And now we get 1, 2, 3 for five steps to go from one to the other. So I bet you can by now guess how many steps we will need to take to go from the anchoring point to three when we zoom in one more level into the fractal. And yeah, that's going to be 16. So somehow the shape of the fractal is encoding the dynamics of 
the number 3. When you iterate 3 under the collapse formulas, you get a sequence of numbers, which was 3, 10, 5, and this is exactly the amount of branches that we have to skip over in the physical structure of the fractal to go from the anchoring points to the point we are zooming in, which is 3 indeed. So it's very cool. It's like the fractal is encoding the dynamics of the formulas, or actually it's the other way around. Actually, the dynamics of the formula are defining the shapes and the structure of the fractal in a way. And there is some explanations for this. It's not truly magic. It has to do with the derivatives of the function at the points we are zooming in, and it has to do with self-similarity and things like that. But I think it's pretty cool to have a visual, a beautiful visual outcome in the shape of a fractal for some otherwise very dry and weird and difficult to visualize problem which involves only numbers and sequences. So that's the video for today and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So bye!